think your animal would do, you know, if you're not giving it feed or water? Do you think that it would stay alive for very long? So you're sick of buying crickets and having them die before you can feed them to your pet. You feel like you're pouring money down the drain, right? I can help with that. Hey guys, Shelby Smith with Jiminy Crickets. Today I'm gonna share with you the basics of keeping your crickets alive. Yes, for this video I will be talking about those of you who use feeder crickets to feed a pet. So, um, this video will not talk about anything to do with breeding, incubation, starting your own colony, those sort of things. This is only gonna talk about crickets that you have bought from some supplier, whether it be a pet store, whether it be online, doesn't matter. You have crickets that you're not trying to breed, you're not trying to start a colony, but you're trying to keep them alive long enough so that your animal can eat them and get the nutrition that they need, and you can stop pouring money down the drain on dead crickets. The good news is you can have a viable, healthy cricket population without a whole lot of fuss, without really expensive, fancy equipment. There are just a few big rocks that you need to address. And after I've talked about those big rocks, I promise I will show you an example setup and uh, my recommendations for the amount of crickets in said setups. Okay, so these rocks that I'm gonna tell you about may seem obvious, but it is shocking to me how many pet owners come to me and say, I just can't keep my crickets alive, which always begs questions for me of, okay, cool, tell me a little bit about how you keep your crickets and what you do with them. Um, what do you give them for feed? What do you give them for water? It would amaze you the amount of times that people say, well, I don't give them feed or water. And I say, well, how do you think your animal would do, you know, if you're not giving it feed or water? Do you think that it would stay alive for very long? So whether you realize it or not, your crickets are animals, they need the basics, the same basics that your lizard or your frog or whatever, your tarantula, whatever you are feeding your crickets to, because they need food and water in the form of crickets and water and whatever you use. Same thing with crickets. They do not survive on air. They need food, they need water, they need shelter, just like any other living being. So rock number one, you need food. Some sort of nutritious um, source of food for the crickets. It doesn't have to be the fancy expensive stuff that you get at the pet store. It totally can. You can get the cricket food. Um, I would recommend something that comes from either flukers or you could use fish flakes or something like that, something that's dry. I typically don't recommend um, feeding out vegetable scraps or fruit or anything like that because you end up with other issues in your colony if you do things like that. The other thing to make sure that you do is make sure that there is some sort of animal protein in that feed, it will help to reduce some cannibalism with your crickets. Because if the crickets eat your crickets before your animal eats your crickets, it defeats the whole purpose. So give them a high quality feed and uh, make sure that they have easy access to it. So that's rock number one. So rock number two is water. Make sure they have some sort of water source. I really dislike the um, things that are called Orbeez, I believe. They're little plastic balls or little watering gel or watering crystals. I, I don't like them. Um, I don't think that they are particularly effective, especially for things that are above pinheads, but to each their own, if it's what you got, you can use it. Um, on a smaller scale, you can use sponges. I don't love them. Um, I think that they harbor a lot of bacteria and cause you a lot of problems later on. Um, even just a simple yogurt um, yogurt cap with a wet paper towel on top of it should be sufficient. That paper towel can be switched very easily. Just monitor it daily so that you make sure it's not completely drying out. Um, other options, I have a very, very basic rudimentary video about um, just taking a tiny little Tupperware. I was trying to see if it was within my sight range. I don't know what I did with it. Tiny little Tupperware, putting some pebbles in it, filling that up with water. Works great as well. Doesn't have to be complicated. You really don't need to use the water crystals. I don't, that's not something I would ever recommend. So water is the second rock. Make sure that you have water for your crickets. Totally makes sense. So I'm gonna be honest, um, most people, who have the food thing, have the water thing down, they fail epically on this third rock. And um, it, 
I think that is probably one of the more frustrating things for them is when this happens. And that is a lack of surface area or shelter for the crickets. Most people underestimate the amount of surface area needed for a given population of crickets. Crickets are opportunistic omnivores. What does that mean? That means that they will eat meat, they will eat vegetables, um, they eat both, they are like us in that way. Uh, given the opportunity, uh, in high population densities, their fellow cricket starts to look really, really tasty. Um, when they are in stress because they don't have enough surface area, when they feel like the access to food and water isn't great enough, cannibalism increases massively. So when in doubt, err on the side of way more surface area than you think you need for the amount of crickets that you have. I realize not everybody has an infinite amount of space that they can raise, you know, hundreds or thousands of crickets in, but um, if there's one thing for you to overkill on, please do it on the surface area. Uh, like I said, your colonies will just be happier, It'll, they'll be less stressful, lower rates of cannibalism, increase the surface area within your cricket habitat, please. And the fourth rock is um, temperature. The crickets, particularly Acada domesticus, are a uh, cold-blooded creature, but they like it warm. So if you are a reptile keeper and you have another animal that likes to be warm, leave the crickets in the same room uh, with that reptile, if you are controlling the whole room. Otherwise, give the crickets their own heat lamp. They need to be warm. They're not gonna be very happy at 75 degrees and below. Most people live in 75 degrees or below. Um, so if you have them just out in your house, they're not gonna be super happy. They're gonna start to develop issues. You're gonna have larger die off. Keep them warmer, they'll be happier. They will be healthier for your animal and you will not be pouring as much money down the drain because they won't unexplainably die. So fourth rock is make sure that you have that temperature correct. All right, so I'm gonna show you a basic setup of how I would do it if I were keeping crickets at home. Um, mind you, like I, this whole cricket barn is 86 degrees, so I don't have the challenge of keeping them warm in the same way, but you could use a heat lamp for something like this. First up is this just Sterlite container. It is a 20 quart, so I think if my math is right, that is a five gallon, this is five gallons. Uh, it is uh, almost 10 inches high, which is important particularly for a cage domesticus. You want something above six inches tall. Otherwise, your crickets are gonna jump out everywhere. So start with something like this. All right, and the next thing you need is some sort of housing. So uh, egg flats, these work really well. You can use used egg cartons as well. Um, you can use paper towel rolls. You can use uh, toilet paper rolls. Anything cardboard like that will work great. I prefer these. These are cheap and easy as well. So like I said, more of these than you think you need. Use them. And then you'll need something, like I said, for your feed and your water. I'm just gonna use what I have down here. Um, like I said, a yogurt top works really well. A tiny Tupperware like this works well. So this is the one that I'm gonna use for the waterer. And so this is just, it's not very big, but you can kind of see where it looks cloudy because I've scuffed it up on the outside with some coarse sandpaper. I recommend you do that both for the feed and the water. My feed one isn't like that, but my water one is. Do as I say, not as I do. I don't actually use these, this is just a demonstration. Um, so, I'm gonna show you how I would set it up. All right, so first things first, I'm just gonna stick these in here. I can kind of arrange them. Honestly, what I would do with these guys is I would rip them in half so that they fit in there a little bit better. And then I would just kind of go and over in like that with them. And the reason that I ripped them in half and I'm doing them this way is so that I have space to put feed and water right there. So just like that, and then I would stick my feed in one end, on one side, and then my water. This 
this is what my water setup would look like if I were doing it like this. Just have a layer of the rocks and then water like that. So see the level where there's some rocks still sticking out so that should give your crickets plenty of ways to not drown. That being said, they might still drown. So this would work great. You could also fill this up. You could put a paper towel in there as well and do the same thing. Just have the water level a little bit higher. So do that. Stick that in there and voila. This is how what you would use for your cricket setup. So you have a top like this. I would probably cut a few holes in this guy. Um, you could use a drill and literally just put some holes in it. Wouldn't need to be a ton. Um, so for a setup like this, the max amount of crickets that I would put in this, um, I would probably very, very maximum for adult crickets put 250. And I think that would probably be pushing it for this size of a container. For juveniles, you could get away with a little bit more because they're smaller. Um, so for juveniles, you could probably push this up to 500. And again, this is a five gallon quart, five gallon, 20 quart bin um, is what this setup would work great for. If you need space for more crickets in that say your animal is a voracious eater and needs goes through like a thousand crickets a week or something i would use something more like that so those are 18 gallon totes over there so if you are looking at a thousand adult crickets thousand to fifteen hundred something like that should work great for somebody who is shall we call you an inexperienced cricket keeper so um for this setup for the 20 quart, five gallon, maximum 250 adults, and that might be pushing it. Uh, food, water, shelter, heat. Those are the big things. Remember that even if you don't think about crickets as animals, technically they still are animals, just like your lizard or your frog or whatever you are feeding these crickets to needs food, water, shelter, that's what your crickets need as well. If you're not giving it to them, you cannot expect them to stay alive, even if your animal needs a meal. So, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions at all, please drop them in the comments. If you are curious about breeding, incubation, establishing your own colonies, check out the other videos that I have on this channel all about that. Like I said, this is just the basics of keeping cr crickets alive so that you can save some money and stop paying for dead crickets. Hope this helps. Uh, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing with all your friends. Thanks for being here. Woo!